Recently, I've been getting a lot of questions on my part one and part two of how to make Halloween cake pops, and I never really answered those in the video, and I honestly don't want to keep commenting back, so I thought it'd be a much better idea to make a part three, so next year when people start to re-watch, they have the truth, some realistic tips and tricks that can help them execute cake pops for the first time. First things first is we have to make the cake to make the cake pops, and you can go ahead and do a homemade recipe, do whatever flavor you would like, but personally, for the sake of time and the fact I'm crumbling these down, I always use box cakes. So so I use the Duncan Hines Devil's Food and the White Cake just because those aren't super sweet. And since I don't need a ton of cake pops, I cut the cake mix powder in half and made half the recipe provided on the back of the box. I switched it up and made my favorite magnolia buttercream frosting for the white cake. I'll link the recipe down below for you. And then I went ahead and mixed in the devil's food with the cream cheese can frosting from Duncan Hines that I've used in my previous tutorials. Whenever I make cake pops, I actually will make the cake itself the day before and let it cool down. If you're making it the day of, you want it to be complete cool because when you go in to crumble it obviously you don't want it to be hot to the touch but you also don't want it to just completely turn your frosting into like liquid liquid you want it to be able to hold together like a little dough batter if you will I got a lot of heat about not using food safe gloves and I totally get it so I Amazoned myself some and I also am linking everything down below in the description box that I can for you crumble up your cake you don't want any medium to large size clumps so just make sure you're really crumbling it on down as far as adding your frosting which is the next step I promise you you do not need a lot of frosting start with one or two scoops and really mix it in sometimes it kind of feels dry but if you start to really scoop the cake around the bowl and press it into itself it will form the dough quicker and if you add too much frosting and it's too like liquidy the cake pop balls will actually not hold together and they'll be a little rough around the edges so just start with a very little amount and work your way up I only use two spoonfuls here as far as scoops, you can definitely use like a teaspoon or a tablespoon, not a teaspoon, a tablespoon scoop to make them all very even. But I like these actual like scoopers that I got from a local baking store. I'm going to go ahead and do two different sizes, the pumpkins and the ghosts. I'm going to make a little bit larger and the devil's food, just the basic cake pops I'll be doing. I'll use the smaller scoop. So you want to fill that entire thing up pretty firmly with cake and then press it into your hand and almost like flatten it at first and move your hands away to kind of form a ball and then fine tune it with your fingers before placing it back onto the cake pan or dish that you have that you're going to be putting in the fridge to chill. I did not need to make a ton of cake pops for this tutorial. So what I like to do is take the excess batter, if you will. Again, it's cooked. It's not raw. And I'll put it in a Ziploc bag and just take all the air out of it, zip it tight and pop it in the fridge. Number one, because maybe you might crack a cake pop or break one or not have enough balls that you thought you did so you can go back and use it or number two I like to give it to the mini human and her friends to DIY their own cake pops as well something that I don't think a lot of people mention that when you roll up your cake pop balls you want to take a look at them before you put them in the fridge and the reason I say that is because if you see something like this that's gonna lead your actual chocolate that you're dipping them into to crack so I like to fully re-roll anything until they're nice and smooth I only need to make three cake pop balls a different shape to make the ghost. I'm pinching towards the top of the cake pop ball itself, forming it into almost like a candy corn shape, and then pressing the base onto the palm of my hand to flatten it out to make a ghost silhouette, if you will. After I smooth and shape, I decide to put it in the fridge for 30 to 45 minutes. You can also do this the night before, so you can just wake up the next day and start to instantly dip your pops. While those chill, a lot of you guys had questions about candy melts versus like chocolate chips. You're going to have to melt chocolate chips down a lot differently to get the same texture you would if you just bought these candy melts from Michael's craft stores. You can use straws, decorative straws, or cake pop sticks. Totally your call. I've linked them both down below for you. But let's get back to the whole candy melt situation because I feel like that was the biggest trouble for people to get a smooth consistency. I don't have experience using anything else besides these candy melts and I linked them in the description for for you and that's because I love the fact that you can pop them in the microwave for 30 second increments and yes stir it when it doesn't look like it needs to be stirred because if you don't the chocolate that's on the bottom will burn which will lead to your chocolate becoming like that tech that rough texture because you're not consistently stirring it so it's not going to be smooth for you 
I'll melt a little bit of chocolate, not waiting the full 30 to 45 minutes for these to chill because you just need to dip a little bit of chocolate on the tip of the straw or cake pop stick that you're using and place it halfway down into the cake pop. You don't need to go all the way through. If you go all the way through and you go to dip your cake pop, it's more likely to just fall off because it's not really grasping onto anything. You created a hole through the entire thing. If you want them to stand up, you can put them in a cup. That way they can stop being kind of flat at the top, which is why I decided to move them to a cup and then keep the ones I was gonna display on the tray, on the tray. I love these so much last year that I wanted to make them again. I wanna do those like witch's brew cauldrons and I just press the cake pop pretty firmly into the tray while dipping the stick into it to kind of flatten it to create a place for the potion and it will all make sense in three seconds. When you're working with this chocolate, do not leave your spoon in there because <laughs> you'll turn around and your spoon will be frozen solid in the chocolate and that is a pain and a half to get out of the chocolate, like melting it or trying to wash it. It's the worst. So just make sure you have parchment paper or something near you to place your spoons. If your chocolate is a little bit too thick, you can add a tinsy, insy, insy bit of vegetable oil and stir it until you get that smooth consistency that you need. And you'll see that I'm just doing a little by little until I get um, something that kind of just drips off the spoon versus falling in plops. Even though I just prepped to thin out that chocolate and remove the spoons, I actually still needed to wait a little bit of time and I thought it was a perfect time to introduce to you today's sponsor, Vanity Planet. This seemed like such an awesome time to partner up with their sonic toothbrush and UV sanitizing base just purely based off the fact that I went to the dentist like a month ago and had like a huge thing of calcium on the back of my teeth. Ugh, nope, so regular brush out. Let's try this sonic situation. This comes with the base, three different toothbrush heads that you can easily replace on Vanity Planet planet.com and the toothbrush itself. It has 40,000 brush strokes per minute compared to the 300 strokes per minute you had with your old manual toothbrush. That's over a hundred times more powerful than manual brushing. But not only that, there are four different brushing modes that I found out while brushing my teeth, which one each were because they light up on the base of the toothbrush, which is so rad. Since I like to rush through brushing my teeth since I am a child, there is actually a brushing timer that has a two minute auto timer that makes sure you're brushing the 88 recommended amount of time while a 30 second interval timer prompts you to move to different areas of your mouth for an even clean which i lack because i just try to rush through and get it done why am i nervous it's also an extra long battery life using a lithium ion rechargeable battery means more time between charges on a full charge you can get up to two weeks of regular brushing and on top of all this guys you get 75 percent off if you click the link in the description and you use my promo code which is also down there for you as well I'm super pumped that I made the switch to the electric toothbrush, so I'm happy to be able to offer a discount code to you guys. So be sure to check it out in the link in the description box using my promo code once again. Thank you, Vanity Planet, for keeping my teeth so fresh and clean, especially because I ate basically all this batter. But let's get back to our regular scheduled programming. I want to show you a very simple technique called marbling with cake pops that you can do with multicolors. I'm just going to be doing this purple as a base. You don't need to shake any excess off. You actually want to leave some excess chocolate on. You typically want to like kind of shake it a little bit, but you don't need to here. Drizzle it with whatever color you'd like on top. The more of this color, the more you're going to see it through the marbling. This is my first go at it in a very long time, and I quickly realized that the purple started to take over because I was dipping the cake pop like upside down. So so the blue is kind of disappearing but I decided to still pop a bunch of different sized eyeballs on it and they're like mini monsters on my next go I decided to add a lot more blue which turned out a lot nicer because there was more marbleization I hope that's a word but you want to also make sure you have your surface protected I have parchment paper to put all the excess out onto this technique is a little bit wasteful with chocolate but it is really gorgeous so it's kind of like a double-edged sword for the second K-pop that I have kind of displayed upwards versus onto a tray, it's those cauldrons. I've done these before. You want to dip the base into black, take a toothpick, wait for that black coating to dry a bit, and make a handle with toothpick and extra black chocolate on each side. I wanted to add a lip as well, just so when I start to decorate the top with the potion part, there's a little bit more of a little texture for it to run off of, and it doesn't just look super flat. For the flames underneath the cauldron, I did not have the orange on hand, so I mixed together some yellow and red candy melts to create the orange you see I'm about to scoop into this Ziploc bag. 
If you are going to be piping any type of chocolate onto your cake pop itself, you want to make sure that it's not scorching hot. If it is, the plastic baggie is obviously going to melt, pop on you, cause a big mess, and ruin the cake pop you're working on. So just make sure that the temperature is like warm to the touch. It's not super hot before putting it in there. You want to snip the tip and flip that cake pop upside down and honestly just randomly start to do flames. They can be any type of way you want them to be. You can make them you know, cartoony or whatnot. I kind of just went more out of random, filled it in with the yellow underneath without letting the orange dry too much. That way I can make a more like smooth base flame because I didn't want it to be super chunky like I did last time. When I was satisfied with the yellow, I switched over to my green with the same Ziploc bag technique and just started oozing in the potion, if you will. And you want to add sprinkles. Actually, if you don't want to, you don't have to. It looks really cool without any decoration. But I decided to add some green, small, and large sprinkles to like you know just make it look like bubbles if you will and then I added some bloody candy skulls and bones that I also found from Michaels all these quote-unquote chocolates the candy melts are the same brand I link them down below for you as a reminder I'm not like switching up the chocolates on you they're the same type of brand just different colors The entire time I was working on the chocolate cake pops, the white cake ones were inside the fridge. And then when I was finished decorating the chocolate, those were in the fridge and I pulled out the white cake and repeated the same process with the dipping of the straws into the chocolate and letting those sit for a bit to cool before dipping my pumpkins into the orange. Fun tip I have for you while dipping, if you're displaying them on a tray, you'll start to notice the straws or the sticks, whatever you're using, will kind of go askew. If you just hold your finger on the straw and let it dry for just a couple of seconds, it will dry straight. That way, when you put them out to display, all the sticks aren't wonky. They're all nice and aligned. I also bumped that cake pop, and I'm going to show you how I'm going to fix that in a second because it's also how you fix cracks. But I was so irritated I did this. It was such a rookie move of me for having a cake pop business before I even started YouTube. What the heck, Rachel? To fix these, I like to go in with a paper towel once they're dry and kind of use it as like a fine grit sandpaper to smooth it down as much as I can, make sure there's no lint or debris on it. There typically is not. Dip it again, it is going to be a little bit thicker, but then just place the prettiest facing of the cake pop out when you're displaying it and when you're decorating it. I piped straight lines with the same orange candy melt to mimic a pumpkin, let that dry completely and moved over to my ghost where I just added two black dots with some black candy melts to do some eyeballs. I added a face on one, but I wasn't the biggest fan. I thought it was really cute with the two eyeballs, but again, totally personal preference. To finish off the pumpkins, I went in with the same potion green to just draw a faux stem at the base of the straw that meets the cake pop. And then I just freehanded some vine looking things. Again, I did this with some textured pumpkin cake pops a couple years ago, but by creating that indent, it led that chocolate to really crack. So I think for a beginner pumpkin, this is an awesome choice as well. And once you have it displayed with all the other cake pops, everything really just comes alive. So even if they're a little bit off, maybe they aren't perfect, Perfect. It really doesn't matter because they look so dang cute together. A couple of questions that I just want to clarify that I saw on my other two videos coming out recently were how far in advance can you prep the actual like cake balls? Wrapped up, sealed, signed, and delivered, making sure they are completely good to go and protected in your fridge. I would say max two days they could be in your fridge before dipping. But when you have them fully decorated and displayed, if you're going to keep any quote unquote leftovers, they should go back into the fridge zip locked and protected to two to three days max of enjoyment. Again, this is all just with my personal experience. I didn't write the book on cake pops. I definitely DIY'd my way through. If you guys want to display the ones that aren't going to be on a tray, you can go to Michael's craft store or anywhere and pick up some flora foam, actually stick that into a vase of your choice and then stick the pops into that and cover where you see the foam with some like paper shreds, even sprinkles look really cute as well. If you guys have any more questions, comments or concerns about cake pops please comment down below you guys know i try my best to respond to every single one of you thank you again to vanity planet for sponsoring today's video i'll see you soon for another diy